Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. Bit of a relaxed episode today. We're gonna to do a Q&A. Thank you very much to all of you that submitted your questions on my YouTube channel on Sunday's video and also jumping through to Instagram as well and putting your questions in there. We've had over 50 questions submitted. So I've been blown away actually by how many have come through. I've picked out a few. Uh, apologies if I did miss you in this episode. I will do another Q&A at some point down the line. So sorry if I do miss you in this one. Um, but let me know in the comments if you do enjoy this style of video and uh, give the video a like as well to let me know. And uh, hopefully I can keep doing these sorts of videos down the track. Um, all right, let's get into the first question. First question that I've got is, what is your favorite US sports team? The Toronto Blue Jays for sure in the baseball uh, it'd be the Vancouver Canucks in the hockey uh, in the NFL I definitely have to say look I'm a Tom Brady fan um, I'm, I've got to say Tampa but I was Patriots prior to that uh, and then the NBA which is my number one sport I love the most um, I'm a massive Russell Westbrook fan so I'm following a lot of Wizards basketball at the moment um, but I'm a huge LeBron James fan as well so I've always been a Lakers fan growing up I was a massive Kobe Bryant fan uh, the late great Kobe Bryant so I'm definitely a sort of Lakers and then kind of watching what Westbrook's doing as well how much did you invest initially when you first started the business and how much do you invest weekly now? Um, well, that's a really good question. I think for those out there that are just starting out, the beauty about this game that we're in is you actually don't need a lot of money to start reselling. So I've started this buying Funko Pops on Facebook Marketplace just because I thought it was really cool that you could buy them for $10 and sell them for $60. And this was only last year I started doing that. And I probably started with maybe 50 bucks. I bought 50, or sorry, I bought five Funko pops and that $50 turned into $300 and then I just reinvested that money and bought more items and it kind of has just snowballed from there. I think that's a really good way to go about it as well because there's sort of a zero dollar down approach. You kind of just buy your first item and then have it grow from there. So um, where am I at now with it? Um, I'm spending probably on average about $750 a week. Uh, on new inventory to purchase. I've, I've been really fortunate now to have a store with over 900 items in my eBay store um, and I'm buying $750 worth of items on a weekly basis to sort of keep topping it up. Obviously the sales come in, you need to keep topping your store up. So that wasn't the case when I very first started. I wasn't spending 750, I was probably spending about 500 and it's slowly just kind of incrementally grown over the last couple of months. How do you send out DVDs and games in the post? Um, well, I could show you that here right now, actually. These are the envelopes that I use. They are the large um, envelopes from Australia Post. They only cost $4.50 each. I buy them in packs of 10. Um, I think the fact that they've got tracking for $4.50 is incredibly good value. Um, I'll put my details on the back there. You keep that slip and um, that's how I do it. I don't bubble wrap um, DVDs or, or games. I just put them in the envelope, send them off, and I've never had any negative feedback. So. That's how I do my DVDs and games. How are your wholesale deals coming along? Um, well, look, I've spoken about this in my goals video at the beginning of the year, and uh, I haven't done a lot with, in the sense of my wholesale deals, but geez, I've been thinking about it. It's certainly been front of mind and certainly something I still wanna do. Um, I have had about three or four reseller buyouts though, so I guess you can kind of class them as sort of bulk purchases. Um, I've been able to get sort of 40 to 50 items from these four or five resellers um, who aren't doing it anymore and they're happy to sell off their stock. Um, so I've been doing that. I've been buying a few of those sets and, and that's kind of been a great way to top up my inventory. Um, but I am looking on Alibaba and uh, I really want to do some local uh, wholesale clothing purchasing. I'm thinking US American sports uh, apparel is probably where I'm going to go for my wholesale agreement, my first one. I've got a few that are sort of ready to go. Um, I've had some good conversations. I'm, I'm feeling pretty comfortable, um, but I haven't pulled the trigger yet. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to give the Alibaba a go as well this year. So fingers crossed that's not too far away and I'll bring you that info when I go ahead and do it. Do you have a set financial goal each and every week? Um, look, I, I do have a set financial goal, sort of. I've got an annual goal and that's really what I sort of work towards. So I said in that goals video that I spoke about before that I really want to do $100,000 in sales on an annual basis. And I have to break that down to a monthly figure. And that's kind of the number that I work towards every month. So for $100,000 over 12 months in revenue, you need to be doing about roughly about $8,500 a month. So every month, I'm sort of trying to attack towards eight and a half thousand. So I don't really look at it more on a micro level on a daily or a weekly basis. As much as I'll talk about it in my What Sold videos on a Sunday, 
I'm more interested in what the numbers look like at the end of the month. Um, so that's sort of the way I go about it. I kind of reverse engineer it from looking at it on an annual basis and then sort of break it down to, to what it would be on a monthly. What is your average sell-through rate? Well, this is a super interesting question and thanks very much to, uh, to the person that submitted this one. I've actually never looked into my sell-through rate. So I jumped into my spreadsheet today and I went through every single one of my sold items for this entire financial year. And I've sold 1,200 items uh, on, across eBay, across Facebook Marketplace, and the average sell-through rate on all of those 1,200 items worked out to 26 days, which I was actually pretty impressed by. I, I thought it was gonna be a little bit more, to be honest. I thought if it could be under a month worth of a sell-through rate, um, then that would be that would be pretty good. So to get 26 days, I was, I was really happy with that. Um, let me know in, in the comments, what's your sell-through rate? How quickly do you move an item? Are there certain days to best list your items on eBay? Um, look, and Facebook Marketplace, I guess, as well. Um, I, look, I think I think certainly for Facebook Marketplace, I, I personally like to list my furniture on a Thursday. Um, I figure that there's more eyeballs, more people free to come and collect items for a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so if you're listing your items up on a Thursday, you probably just stand the best chance to be in that newly listed tab and then to be obviously spied, secured, you know, come and collect uh, within a 24 hour time frame, which is what you need to do with Facebook Marketplace. It's all got to be super fast. So I think when it comes to Facebook Marketplace, listings on certain days are probably a little bit more important than eBay. Um, eBay is probably a slightly longer sales cycle um, for, for basic items as opposed to Facebook Marketplace. Um, so I don't think it matters as much there. What is the most profit you've made on a single item on both Facebook and eBay? Well, look, I do a lot of furniture selling on Facebook Marketplace, so it would definitely be the Silverwood Buffet Table. Uh, I sold that, I think it was $650 from memory, and I think I paid about $100 for that one, so it was about a $550 profit, but the best part about that one, it was on the same day, it sold on the very same day, and, and that's generally the case of what happens with furniture, it can move so fast. Um, but that was by far and away the highest profit furniture flip that I've ever had. And then on eBay, it was actually back when I was doing my Funko Pops quite heavily. I sold Brook, uh, a Funko Pop Brook for $230 and I bought it off Facebook Marketplace for $10. So that's probably been the best um, single item uh, profit that I've made on eBay um, over the last sort of seven months. It's not a massive number, but um, for me, that would definitely be my highest. Do you prefer eBay or Facebook Marketplace? I would actually love to throw this question back into the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you prefer eBay or Facebook Marketplace yourself? If I've got to give an answer, I'm going to be saying it's Facebook Marketplace. I think if I could sell every single one of my items anywhere, it would be on Marketplace because it's a simple process to list. It's a very simple process for the buyer to come and collect the item and uh, there's no fees. Three massive pillars that you don't get when it comes to eBay. A uh, little bit longer to list, the buyer, you've got to post it out and that takes time and then you get slugged 15% worth of fees. So look, unfortunately, when you're growing a business and building a business uh, like an e-commerce store, you kind of need to rely on eBay. Um, but if I could have it my way, it'd be 100% done on Facebook Marketplace. Do you accept returns on eBay? Uh, very short answer, yes, I do. Um, I've got a 30-day return policy and rather than having the headache of dealing with somebody that acts up when you say that you don't want to give a return, I just I just do it. And uh, they often leave positive feedback and I get the item back and I just go and resell it again. So yes, absolutely, always return the item when the request comes in. Do you have an eBay store or a personal account and which one is better? Look, with this question, I think the best answer with this one would be, it depends on what level of reselling you're at. I think it, it, that's really the determinant. There's no what's better, it's, it's just how many items are you trying to list on a monthly basis. If you're at least up to the point of doing 50 items, I think a, a personal account is fine from sort of zero to 50 listings a month. And then the minute you go past 50, I think then that's when you obviously will require a store because of the insertion fees per item. Uh, when you get down to that path and, and that level, you're gonna start to be slugged to quite a lot of fees. Um, so you, you kind of just need that store subscription for $25 a month. It's just better financially to do so. Where do you keep all of your stock? Um, well, this is a pretty good question as well. I, I keep all of my stock at home and I think for anybody that's doing reselling, if you can keep it at home, it's just gonna be a much more efficient way and a much more cost-effective way of doing things. I am really fortunate where I'm living at the moment that I do have a lot of storage space. So there is a spare bedroom here at the house. I've got a cupboard right here in the office and I've got quite a large balcony space 
as well out the back. So I kind of use all of those three locations uh, to house all of my stock, but it is forever growing, that's for sure. And there will come a point down the line where I'll need to get into the storage unit setup. And uh, I know that's gonna cost me a lot of money and uh, the inefficiencies as well of having to go out there and collect the items, etc. cetera. Um, but it's just growing so much so and the, the amount of items that I'll have, I just won't have a choice. Um, but if you are doing it to a point where you can keep it all at home, I think that's probably the best way to be. Is it better to source high value items or bread and butter items? Um, look, I think for this one, the best way to go about it is to always have your bread and butter items. That's sort of the base layer. You kind of need them to kind of keep ticking the numbers over. They are the ones that you can rely on. And then I think for sort of the more, the cream on the top scenario is to have your high profit items as well. So I think you want to have both. You kind of want to focus on both. Um, but sort of your high profit end is probably a bit harder to get your hands on for it to be a really high profit. Um, so that's why it is the cream on the top because they don't come around as often. For me and the way I sort of structure my business is I've got a lot of bread and butter items, you know, shoes and clothes. I just know that I can buy and make a quick 20 to $30 on those sort of items. And then my, my cream on top would be my furniture. If I can do one or two pieces of furniture and make a quick, you know, one or $200 worth of profit off just two items, that sort of just adds up my, my weekly sales figures. So that's the way I like to do it or the way that I look at it. Shoes and clothes, bread and butter, and then mix it up with some, uh, some furniture to top things up. Do you plan to mix things up with your videos and uh, how long have you been uh, growing the YouTube channel? Um, this is a really good question regarding my YouTube. I've had the YouTube channel for seven months now, I believe. No, sorry, I think it's about nine months actually. Uh, so nine months on YouTube is, is how long it's taken. It's been a daily practice for me to constantly try and grow the YouTube channel. We're at about two and a half thousand subscribers now. So it is a bit of a slog, but I absolutely love doing it. And I'm doing three new videos every single week. Uh, the videos, if you're here for the first time that I put out, uh, it's sort of a, a really random assortment of videos on a Tuesday. Uh, I've tried a few different things and then I'll always do a trip to the thrift on a Thursday and then I'll always do my what sold uh, top 10 items of the week as well uh, on a Sunday. So do I plan to mix things up? Probably not the Thursday and the Sunday, but I think the Tuesday is open for interpretation. I think I'm pretty happy to take any sort of viewer feedback on videos that they'd like to see and make that day like today uh, with this Q&A video a bit of an experimental day. Um, to try a couple of different things, but um, certainly the what sold, I, I don't plan on, on changing that at this stage on a Sunday, unless you guys want me to, and you're not enjoying that, but based on my analytics, um, it, it shows to be um, a good video that people are enjoying, and, and the trips to the thrift as well, people are, you guys out there are obviously enjoying that one as well, so um, I think I'll just mix things up moving forward on a Tuesday, but you guys let me know what you want to see, and I'll do it, I'll do it based on that. How many hours do you spend on your business each week? Um, well, how many hours? A lot is, is the answer with this one. Um, I'll probably do say 60 to 70 hours roughly. I've not really ever looked into it. I've never really counted my hours, but I do roughly 20 hours worth of YouTube, um, which I obviously class as, as a lot of work um, for three videos, 20 hours there. And I'll probably do maybe 40 to 50 hours worth of reselling. Um, so you could, you could say 60 to 70 hours pretty comfortably. Um, and I think when you're first starting out and you're trying to grow a business, um, trying to start a YouTube channel, I just think that there's really no other option. You kind of just have to put in all the hours early days. Um, there's just no other way to grow it and grow it as quick as you possibly can, which is what I'm trying to do. So it's seven days a week. I work every single day and I've got to work out ways to try and stop that and have a day off. But um, yeah, a lot of hours and I think it's going to probably be like that for at least a little bit longer. What got you into reselling and what did you do before reselling? Um, well, what got me into it was uh, I think the coronavirus for me had a really large play. I'd always done this sort of casually. I understood the concept. I enjoyed the process, uh, but I never really took it seriously. I never really did it um, even part time, to be honest. I just did it here and there. Uh, and then obviously the coronavirus hit. What I was doing prior to this uh, was working in sponsorship sales and membership sales within the AFL, our National Football League over here in Australia. Um, it took me all over the country. Um, I was here working in it on the Gold Coast in my hometown. Uh, I was working over in Perth as well in Western Australia and then in Melbourne as well, sort of the home of football for a little period. So. Um, it's sort of taken me all around the world and, and the country. Um, I worked in Canada for a soccer club. So it's always been sort of sports sales focus. Um, and then the coronavirus hit. 
So I, I thought, let's stick with sales and let's you know work for yourself. Give that a go. Give that a try. If you're ever going to give it a go, now would be the time to do it. Um, so that's when I've sort of started this process of being my own boss and, and documenting the journey uh, to show you guys as well that it is possible and you can do it. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed it and uh, I'm going to keep trying to do it. Are you happy with how you are scaling and do you see yourself continuing full time? Um, well, look, I'd always love a few extra sales, no doubt about it. Um, uh, I think I'm pretty happy though, to be honest, with the way that I'm scaling. It's been seven months now that I've been doing it full time. I think I'm really happy with the way YouTube's going to have two and a half thousand subscribers uh, in just nine months of doing that. I think that's been really good to be able to get monetized, have that as an extra uh, revenue stream. That's been really good. Um, I think uh, for my goal of $100,000 a year worth of salary, um, not salary, just in, in revenue, um, that's sort of on track, I think, at the moment. This month of March, I'm actually going to do that that average that I need for the very first time. So I'm sort of projecting towards you know eight and a half thousand dollars every single month, which is absolutely my reselling goal. Um, but it's been a slow climb, no doubt about it. I sort of started around the six thousand in revenue, um, then I got to seven thousand in revenue, and then I've sort of averaged around seven and a half. Um, over the last sort of two months to start the year. So to hit sort of, I think it's about eight and a half thousand this month. Um, I've, I've just sort of climbed that next thousand. So I'm just going to keep doing it. I absolutely love the process of it, which is I think the main thing. If you're not getting the numbers that you want, if you're enjoying the process towards growing it, you're going to stick with it. And I absolutely love making these YouTube videos as well. So um, absolutely, I'll continue full time. And uh, I do think the scaling of it is, is going okay so far. So there you go, guys. They are all the questions. Hopefully, I didn't ramble on too long with any of those. And hopefully, you got a bit of a takeaway out of it as well. They were your questions after all. And uh, hopefully, you have enjoyed it. Like I said at the start, if I did miss any of your questions um, that you submitted, firstly, thank you for submitting them. I really do appreciate it. And I do hope to get to those questions at a later point as well with another video. Um, let me know. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video by any means. And uh, let me know if you want to see these Q&As moving forward as well. Um, I enjoy making them. They're a lot of fun to connect with you guys and answer your questions. And um, yeah, fingers crossed we can do a few more. But uh, until next time, guys, I'll see you on Thursday. Trip to the thrift on Thursday. Can't wait to do it. They're always my favorite to make. We'll see you then.